Hey everyone, my name is Daniel and welcome back to the finance channel. I hope all of you are having a great day out there. As always, here today, I want to do a deep dive into the tattooed chef, exactly what it is as a business, how they make money, the opportunity that I see with the stock from a price target perspective, and exactly what I'm doing with TTCF moving forward. So if you end up enjoying this video and finding some value in it, please consider subscribing. Without further ado here, let's get into the video. So when we talk about the tattooed chef, what they are, what their business is, at its core, the tattooed chef makes food that is frozen, easy to make, vegetarian, and relatively healthy. You see a variety of, of their different product categories, at least here on their investor presentation, single serve bowls, smoothie bowls, vegetable blends, meat alternatives, and plant powered pizza. This is that kind of their current product category or the categories uh, that their products fall into. But longer term, they have plans to expand into much more than just the frozen food aisle expanding into, you know, uh, different desserts, ambient products, maybe snacks, things along those lines. But when I look at the tattooed chef, I see it as a company fully exploring the possibility and the opportunity with the plant-based food space and that movement that has been rising over the past, you know, a couple of decades at this point and continues or potentially will continue to uh, kind of increase in popularity over the coming years and decades. When I look at the tattooed chef, again, they have a variety of different products. I think uh, they're planning on having over 60 by the end of 2021. This has been rapidly growing a uh, year over year over year since 2017, ever since the brand of the tattooed chef was formed. We'll talk a little bit about the company's history in a moment here, but again, 62 products by the end of the year. I think they're uh, kind of well into the 50 range, mid 50s at this point. And, you know, when we look at the Tattoo Chef, important to understand that, you know, they're with the big guys already. They're in the Costco's, the Sam's Clubs, the Targets. They just got into Kroger's. They're with the big dogs and products are flying off of the shelves within those individual stores. So, you know, what we know at this point, the Tattoo Chef, they're expanding their products year over year over year. They're innovating very quickly and people like and enjoy their products, which is very, very good to hear from an investor's point of view. Now, uh, again, talking about the Tattoo Chef, we just went through uh, what their business is, what stores they're in, people like their products. It's just a flat out positive from that perspective. But now taking a look at the company from a bit of a history perspective, you know, uh, the Tattooed Chef, the brand was actually formed back in 2017. But prior to that, the Tattooed Chef was actually a food distribution company, distribu uh, distributing rather a variety variety of different vegetables and Italian products to be sold in national or a variety of different national uh, retailers uh, under a private label brand. Again, keep in mind, uh, they distributed these products the stores put their names on it. This is something like potentially Kirkland or other stores within like, let's say Costco, maybe Sam's Club. The Tattooed Chef did this and they actually continue to do this, uh, although it has become a much smaller portion of their revenue as private label products do not make as much money and the margins within that business aren't as high. What is big and what will have the most opportunity long term is the actual Tattooed Chef brand. Again, uh, then Sarah Galetti, the, the CEO's daughter, joined the company. They changed it to Itella Food again, making different uh, Italian based foods, things along those lines. And then after that, 2017, Sarah Galetti steps in. She changes the name of the company to the Tattooed Chef. And right after that, you can see an explosion in revenue growth from again, 2017, 2019, 2020. And now in 2021, we're expecting potentially over $250 million in revenue, showcasing substantial year over year over year growth, looking at the Tattooed Chef here and potentially looking forwards out into the future. So uh, obviously a company heavily involved in the food space, not just now, but it has been involved in the food space significantly significantly over the past, uh, again, couple of decades at this point, ever since Sam Galetti, the CEO, really started in the food industry. He has decades of experience. Great to have him at the helm of this company. Now, looking at uh, kind of the opportunity here when it comes to revenue growth, we see that by 2022, the company expects to hit roughly $300 million worth of revenue within that year. In my opinion, that is a very, very conservative given the fact that the company now expects to do in and around $240 million in revenue in just 2021. But, you know, aside of that, we can take a look at this kind of product expansion or product roadmap to see that, again, when we talk, kind of when we talk about expansion of revenue, it comes from multiple different sources. Uh, one is over 200 SKUs planned by the company to be released over the coming years. You have new platforms, again, potentially through e-commerce, new retailers, and you also have product expansion into much more than just the fro uh, frozen food category, but expanding into ambient products, uh, 
kind of products stored within a refrigerators, you have snacks, other things along those lines, providing, you know, substantial growth, in my opinion, this is enough for them to potentially get up to $500 million in revenue or kind of that run rate. But beyond that, you see them expanding into, again, the grocery aisle with things like snacks, food service, that's obviously very big, licensing, convenience stores, or international. We know that uh, the Tattooed Chef recently has started testing within the United Kingdom, from my opinion, a couple of their, or from my understanding rather, a couple of their products have been seen in Costco's within the UK. So again, international provides a substantial kind of growth catalyst for the company looking forwards over the next couple of years to, in my opinion, uh, doing well over $1 billion in revenue within the next five years here, potentially by 20. 2025 to 2026. So uh, again, here is a bit of a picture here talking about their different, uh, you know, the, the kind of the stores that they're in expanding in a major way. They just uh, kind of got into Kroger here uh, just a couple of days or I think it was a week or two ago. But, you know, Target going very well. They have mentioned that this or they kind of launched in Target back in March. They expanded. They now have, from my understanding, a well into the double digit range when it comes to the products that they offer within Target. Uh, but, you know, Target has said that this has been the most successful frozen food launch in the history of Target. You know, they're expanding into much more uh, or many more rather national retailers across those lines, potentially Whole Foods, that's a bit off, big opportunity for them over the long run. But either way, you see these different kind of opportunities for this company to expand not just the amount of SKUs, SKUs products they have within these stores, but to expand the amount of stores they're win, uh, win rather the amount of stores that they're in, in and of itself. So multiple different growth catalysts and tailwinds for this company to experience over the next couple of years. You also have the Tattoo Chef being vertically integrated, taking care, uh, taking rather care of the whole process of manufacturing their food from the innovation point of view, designing the actual product, the boxes, planting the food, a lot of their food actually comes from their own farms and things along those lines, growing it, manufacturing it, and then obviously uh, kind of the cycle repeats in this situation where after you manufacture from their two facilities, one in California, one in Italy, it gets shipped out to those national retailers and the cycle just repeats from there. So uh, obviously having a vertical integration aspect of their business allows them to improve margins from that standpoint and hopefully longer term will allow them to be a much more profitable business than a lot of food companies out there. Here you, again, you have here in uh, 2019, a majority of their revenue growth came from uh, existing SKUs, so existing products. In 2020, again, uh, growth from 2020 to 2021, a majority is coming from existing products, but you can see, again, a majority of growth looking forwards will, in my opinion, come from new products, new SKUs that will be expanded into different retailers over the long run. Now, this is probably the most interesting slide here out of the bunch. It's guidance, right? A guidance looking out from 2021 all the way to 2026. And we can see that the Tattooed Chef expects to have roughly $1 billion in revenue by year 2026. Very interesting here. This was given back late 2020, I want to say, is that uh, the date that this investor presentation was released. This is the number that this company gave. And in my opinion, and I know a lot of investors that share the same opinion, the company is potentially sandbagging this number a little bit. In my opinion, the chances of the company hitting roughly a billion dollars in revenue by 2026 is much higher than anticipated due to the fact that the tattooed chef, hey, they might be a, a newer public company, maybe sandbag their numbers a little to make uh, kind of meeting these numbers a little bit easier. In my opinion, a billion dollars in revenue could very well come by 2025 as long as they continue to execute the way they have been over the past couple of months with new retailers, chains, international expansion, and expansion into brand new product categories. Either way, they expect roughly 35% gross margins or a roughly a 65% operating expense margin. Adjusted EBITDA, roughly 20% of total sales is expected by 2026, which makes it very interesting to potentially predict things looking out to 2025 with potential price targets, which is kind of what we're going to do next. And then we'll talk about exactly what I'm doing with the stock moving forward. So looking at my price target, targets for the tattooed chef. Again, when we look at revenue growth all the way from 2021 to 2024, profitability within those years will more likely than not, not be very big. And this is just due to the tattooed chef expanding their revenues, innovating on a high level and potentially investing in marketing to create more brand awareness. But longer term, as the company grows, I think that profitability will be more and more of a thing that they continue to emphasize on looking out to again, 2025. Now, again, I do understand uh, that they did say a billion dollars in revenue by 2026, but this company just 
completed an acquisition for, I want to say it was 30, 40 million dollars that will allow the company to have an up to 200 million dollar revenue run rate or an extra 200 million dollar revenue run rate by the end of 2023. This is a, a tortilla and Mexican food facility that again, uh, once is completed, will allow the company to expand into ambient products and the entire uh, kind of, I want to say it's Latin American uh, style food, things along those lines. But either way, this one acquisition added up to 200 million dollars in revenue by 2023 or a revenue run rate on top of their current expectations, which again, when we look at this whole uh, kind of guidance slide, cash on hand plus cash generated for operations and or equity uh, available to be used to support accretive acquisitions, no acquisitions included in 2021 guidance. Very interesting. And that's, again, really important to understand looking out to 2026 here that this company were more likely than not complete a major, at least a couple more acquisitions by the time 2026 comes around, which will allow them to expand their revenue in a significant way when the time comes. Again, just a couple, you know, 20, 30 million dollars. That's nothing compared to their cash position. And looking out to then, it presents an really interesting opportunity, at least in my opinion, uh, to really grow from that standpoint alongside their current business. So in my opinion, $1.2 billion in revenue, that could very well happen. Sure. We'll look at a more uh, kind of conservative scenario in a moment here. But again, $1.2 billion, that's in my opinion, a very likely scenario. When we look at average revenue growth throughout that period, that comes out to around 43%. Again, a little bit lower than what we've seen here over the past couple of years. But again, the law of large numbers as things grow, percentages decrease, or essentially that's what it says. But uh, when we talk about gross margins, they expect to have roughly 35% gross margins. And then on top of that, they expect to have a 20% 20% EBITDA margin, that's earnings before interest, taxes, depreciations, and amortizations. Taxes are roughly the only expense from that standpoint. So what I did is cut EBITDA down by one quarter to account for potential taxes. And, uh, you know, keep in mind, this company was slightly unprofitable for the past couple of years, which, you know, potentially will allow them to use some of their losses to offset some of their gains. We'll see what happens then. But a net income margin of 15% could very well happen if this company does end up executing on a high level. Use a PE ratio of 30. Again, that's conservative, given that this is a growth company at its core. And, you know, you kind of multiply the earnings by the PE ratio, and you get a potential market cap of over $5 billion or upside of well over a 3x over the next four years, potentially if this company does end up executing. Now, originally I did have a 40 PE ratio here. I did cut this down to a 30. You know, uh, this is highly debatable and will be heavily reliant on what the market is by then. But hey, if this company continues to expand internationally and by the time 2025 rolls around, there is a significant opportunity for the tattooed chef to expand even further into the food sector, then a 40 PE ratio may very well come to fruition. But hey, I want to use a 30 just to be a little more concerned. But I, I think this does showcase the potential opportunity that the stock presents here. Uh, you know, given their growth, the product that they have, and the demand that the product has currently. I do see opportunity with this company to continue executing on a high level. Now, when we assume a net income margin of 10%, this is closer to some of the larger food uh, kind of names out there, we still get a situation where there's more than a 2x left in this stock over the next few years here, which you know is kind of on par, or potentially even beating the market throughout that same time frame. And this obviously opens up the potential for even more upside as again, the worst case scenario for this stock is again, still upside, at least in my opinion, based off the execution of this company. But either way, I see a lot of opportunity here. Let me know what you think about these projections in the comments section down below. But if this company manages to execute, market maybe favors them in a bit of a way to where the PE ratio is a bit higher, there is a lot of potential here. All of these numbers are variables. So you need to consider that. I'm not a financial advisor. I'm not a wizard. I can't predict into the future. But looking at the tattooed chef, I think this presents a nice growth play with a rather insignificant valuation compared to something like Beyond Meat. When you, you, know, when you look at Beyond Meat as a company, it's trading at a price to sales ratio of roughly 20 using the last 12 months of numbers. When you look at the tattooed chef, again, pretty similar growth over the next potentially five years here. But the tattooed chef is trading at less than a 2x or a more or two times cheaper than Beyond Meat as a stock. Again, the tattooed chef pretty much break even slash profitable on that front. Similar growth, smaller company, more uh, kind of potential when it comes to revenue growth over the coming years. Either way, 
I'm bullish on this company. Now, when we talk about exactly what I'm doing from a position perspective, how much my portfolio is allocated to the Tattooed Chef, I have, I wanna say, a little over 20% of my portfolio in the Tattooed Chef. Again, this has increased substantially as the stock hasn't really dropped alongside some of my other positions here over the past couple of weeks. But when we talk about the Tattooed Chef, I wanna say around 15% of my portfolio is in Tattooed Chef shares, potentially closer to 18% at this point. And then you have roughly 5 to 8% in 2023 call options for the Tattooed Chef. I believe they are a $20 strike price expiring uh, January of 2023. So again, that is more of a so-called bet, but the opportunity I see with the Tattooed Chef is very, very high. I think there's a lot of upside and room for innovation at this company, which makes me very, very optimistic looking out to 2024 to 2025 that this will outperform the market in a major way. Anyways, thank you all so much for watching this video. If you found some value in it, please consider subscribing and I'll see you all in the next one. Bye-bye.